She hadn't seen her grandson in a couple weeks now, which seemed increasingly odd as the days went by, because her grandson, along with her daughter, were living with her. Fearing for the worst, she decided to call the police and filed a missing persons report, and not just for her grandson, but for her daughter too. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Cassie and this is A Wicked World. The case I have to tell you about today is another missing child that did not get enough media attention. And this child's been missing for a while now. This is another one that could have been avoided. Amir did not have to go missing. There were people who could have spoken up. If you see something, say something. Don't remain silent and let a poor child go missing or get killed. His mother is saying nothing about where he is located. Nothing. This is the story of Amir Jennings. Amir Jennings was born on June 28, 2010 in South Carolina to his father, Roderick Mitchell, and his mother, Zena Jennings. Amir was a happy and active toddler who loved to dance and play. He was also described as giggly, and he loved listening to music. Prior to Amir's birth, his mother, Zena, who was in her early 20s at the time, had been attending Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina. She was a good person and a good student. But soon after Amir was born, she started acting rather erratically. Zena was struggling with severe postpartum depression, and on top of that, she had been diagnosed with schizophrenia and put on an antipsychotic medication. Only months after Amir was born, Zena moved out of the apartment that she shared with her then boyfriend, Roderick Mitchell, Amir's father. It's said that Zena often made cryptic calls to her friends and family and talked about how difficult it was to raise a child. Sometimes she would even talk about giving Amir away or just simply abandoning him. There were also multiple times that Zena's friends said they saw her mistreating Amir. She had squeezed his hands until he cried, left him in a hot car, and had kicked him. Zena had also told a friend that she had thought about throwing Amir out the window while she was driving down the highway one day. Zena is also said to have a history of excessive drinking and drug abuse, which also might have led to her short temper that she had with Amir. Now, Amir's father, Roderick, wanted to be a part of his son's life, but Zena didn't let him see Amir often. Every time he tried to spend time with Amir, Zena and her mother, Jocelyn, would act like it was a hassle, and they acted also like he was not needed anyways. Roderick would send Zena $150 out of every paycheck so that she could use the money for Amir. Whether it was going there or not is up for debate. He said that she was a good mother, but just very possessive of her son. And I think that he's being way too kind in that statement. Way too kind. Then on November 22nd, 2011, Roderick just happened to bump into Zena and Amir at a beauty shop on Taylor Street in Columbia. He asked Zena if he could spend some time with Amir and take him shopping that day, to which Zena replied, yes, and he was shocked. After spending time with Amir that day, Roderick went and dropped him back off with his mother and scheduled a time to see the little boy again, November 29th, which would be Roderick's next day off. So on November 29th, Roderick went to Zena's mother's house, where they were living, to pick up Amir. But when he got there, Zena would not allow Amir to go with him, telling Roderick that they had other things they needed to do that day. So Roderick ended up leaving, but before he did, he picked up Amir gave him a big hug, and told him, I love you. This, unfortunately, would be the very last time that the father would see his son. So on December 5th, 2011, after Jocelyn had not seen her daughter and her grandson in quite some time, she decided to call the Columbia Police Department and file a missing persons report for both of them. The reason she didn't call sooner was because Zena had friends in North Carolina and Georgia, and she would often go there and visit them and stay for a few nights, and Amir would go with her. 
But at this point, it had been longer than the normal amount of time she was usually gone for, so she was worried. Now, there's also a lot of discrepancy about the day that Amir actually went missing, due to all the different accounts of people that said that they had seen him around the time that he did go missing. So I just put the date that he was actually reported missing. Unfortunately, it took Columbia police until December 24th to track Xena down. It was only after she had crashed her maroon 2004 Dodge Neon at Millwood Ave and Lady Street in Columbia, pretty close to her mother's house. Amir was not with her. The officer who responded to the scene had looked at the missing persons register and noticed that Xena as well as Amir were on it. So when he noticed that Amir was not with her, he immediately asked her about her son's whereabouts. Zena refused to tell the police where her son was. So she was placed under arrest for unlawful conduct and cruelty to children. After being arrested, Zena told investigators multiple stories about her son's location, saying Atlanta, Georgia at one point, and then Charlotte, North Carolina. She even told investigators at one point that she did not have a child, but then later admitted that Amir was in fact hers. Investigators had already seen her C-section scar anyway, so she'd already blew her cover. On December 29th, 2011, since Zena was still not talking to police and not telling them where Amir was located, she was officially charged with child neglect. At one point during the investigation, Zena had told investigators that she had left Amir with a man named Ernest Robinson. So on January 2nd, 2012, Police brought Zena to an apartment complex on Garner's Ferry Road, where she claimed that she had dropped off a mirror. However, she couldn't remember which building or which apartment she had left him at. Turns out, this guy Ernest, believe it or not, was totally fabricated. On January 4th, Zena's stepfather told police that he had seen Zena in their backyard with a shovel around the time that a mirror had gone missing. When police heard this tip, they immediately obtained a search warrant for Zena's mother's house as well as Zena's car. The police and cadaver dogs searched within an eight mile radius of Zena's mother's house, but they were unable to locate Amir. Nine months later, in September of 2012, while Zena was on trial, she was also in the late stages of another pregnancy. So that's fabulous. She was also struggling with mental health issues and was not reacting well to her, the drugs that she was prescribed. Her trial also ended up getting delayed because she went into labor with her baby during this time. There were many people that came forth as prosecution witnesses during her trial. Tellers from Zena's bank were among these people. They said that on November 29th, Zena had come in with Amir and she was letting him run wild in the building. And she didn't do anything about it at all until the tellers said something to her. Amir was even opening up doors in the bank and going inside. The next time Zena had gone into the bank on December 4th, Amir was not with her. And she looked confused as to why the amount of money she thought was in her account was not actually there. The teller said that she ended up withdrawing all of her money except for the $5 that's required to stay in the account by bank policy. It was also revealed that on November 9th, not long before Amir disappeared, Zena had been arrested for prostitution as well as marijuana possession in Atlanta. She had been staying there with her half-sister. As I had previously said, Zena frequently traveled between Charlotte, Columbia, and Atlanta, which means that Amir could be located within a very large radius, which is probably why it's made it so difficult to locate where he is, along with the fact that Zena doesn't want to talk, of course. A store owner also testified that she had seen the boy and his mother a month after he was said to have disappeared, but the prosecutors challenged it and there was no surveillance video to back up the claim. A man from Augusta, Georgia had also been questioned during the investigation. He said that he had met Zena at a gas station around December 6, 2011. They exchanged phone numbers, and she never indicated that she had a child, and Amir was not with her at the time. A few days later, they met up at this man's apartment for some drinks and engaged in some intimate activity. Zena's attorney asked that this man's testimony not be used in the case because it was not in reference to Amir. But the judge allowed it, saying that it did give a timeline as to when Amir was with her versus when he wasn't. 
Police say this man is not the father of Xena's second child because the timing does not match up. Though it does seem pretty close to me, but I don't know. Other prosecution witnesses testified that Xena had been cruel to Amir in the past, did not supervise him properly, and they had heard her talking about selling him or possibly giving him away. She told me that she thought about throwing him out the car and continuing on the highway. I said to her at that point, you know, it can be overwhelming. That's not something you think about. She told me sometimes it feels more than just overwhelm. I called her daily from that point that she left my house every day to try to check on her and see how he was. And I asked her to bring him over there. And she did that? Yes. And still in September of 2011 is when she put him on the floor? Yes. Kicked him? Yes. Told him to go play? Yes. At some point at that day, did she and Amir leave your home? Yes. Where was Amir when he was playing? He was in my son's room. Him and my son were playing in there. And were y'all in the same room? You and Zena? No, we were actually in the living room. Did Zena say anything when she got ready to leave? She said that they were about to go because he was getting on her nerves. During the trial, Zena's attorney, Hemphill Pride, said that he didn't know of any law that requires a mother to tell the state where a child is. The jury's decision only took four hours. Zena was convicted of unlawful conduct towards a child in September of 2012. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison. However, she would only end up serving four and was released in 2016. Authorities have reached out to her multiple times since her release, but they say she is still uncooperative in working with them. They say that they believe she does not want to find her son. Duh. Amir still remains missing to this day. He's described as African-American with brown hair and brown eyes. Amir had four to six teeth at the time of his disappearance and had a gap between his upper front teeth. Amir was around 18 months old at the time of his disappearance in 2011, two feet, two inches tall, and weighed around 25 pounds. He was last seen on November 23, 2011, wearing a black bomber jacket and black K-Swiss brand sneakers. Today, Amir would be 13 years old. Extensive searches have turned up no signs of Amir, and police say they do believe he is probably dead at this time, but the investigation is still not closed. If you have any information about Amir's case or his whereabouts, please call the Columbia Police Department at 803-252-2911. So, thank you for listening to all of Amir's story today. It's been 12 years since he went missing, so sadly, chances are he will not be found alive. But either way, his father and his other family need closure. Amir needs to be found. Also, so his mother can be properly punished. Her child has been missing for this long, and she only served four years. It's not nearly enough time. And hopefully they find him and are able to further prosecute her. If you do like true crime and do you want to hear it from me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and give this video a like too if you feel like it. Thanks for watching A Wicked World today. Until next time, take care guys. Bye. Thank you for being patrons of A Wicked World. Adina, Catherine, Lindsay, and Mel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now, there's even more of A Wicked World on Patreon. You'll have access to exclusive videos each month and more. Any support truly helps to make sure the victims never get forgotten and to highlight the shortcomings of society associated with each case. So check it out at patreon.com slash a wicked world or use the Patreon app.